Hello, everybody. Give me a shout out. Let me know if you can hear me. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Peter. Hey, Carmen. Jeff, Paul, Michael. Ryan, and Ryan's got his real name now. Vincent. Jim, Eric. Great. Okay, guys. So um, let's do a couple of administrative things off the top. I see some of you have already gotten into the hub and started. Oh, you're seeing my screen, my view here, and started creating homework. So that's really cool. Um, and just to, so that you know kind of how to work with this, it, it's right in here. You can you post your homework down here, but you can also be viewing it in here uh, in this what's going on column. We can choose a week, and that'll sort all of it by week. So this way I can go through and I can look and see you know who's posted in one who's posted in two things like that okay now this class and homework uh, this is not a sculpting class in terms of how to sculpt the anatomy and how to sculpt everything perfectly I am covering that and I plan to be doing that so I will go through uh, all of these and comment on them and add my notes uh, and I've got the special privileges. Let me find one that's there. Where I can go in and add notes directly onto your crit canvas. And uh, and then I'll, if I add notes in there, I'll leave a little signature that says from Ryan. And uh, the crit canvas was an idea that I had when I was in India. I was trying to find a way to uh, work with you guys and with... Um, uh, with people that are kind of, well really just and with myself uh, and this is designed to be a way for you to keep track of what you like what you don't like and really watch yourself grow uh, through the whole session through the years uh, and it's in its early stages right now here on um, uh, on the hub so let me know what you guys think of this and how uh, this is working out for you uh, and I will like I said come through here I will add comments below and I'll add what I like and what I don't like for everything here. If you want actual hardcore advice about something specific, uh, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can email me. Uh, you can also drop into one of the, uh, the hub, not the hub, but into one of the uh, hangouts and, uh, and ask it of either me or Nate or uh, whoever's in there. So. Any questions before I go forward and start jumping into the tasks that I want to do? Aaron's asking about a particular format uh, for screenshots, and I don't have a specific this is fine when it's a compilation it's probably wise to have multiple views so if it's a face then it'd be great to have a front and a side if it's something else uh, body it's still front and side so it's really what you want commented on that's what's most important okay I'm starting my drawing tool here Okay, Michael's got no questions. Matthew, after this course is over, how do we know what times you guys will be in the hub? Um, Matthew, do you mean by the after the ten week course is over, or do you mean after today? If you mean after today, well, I, Nate should have uh, sent out an email that gave you guys a time and a place. It's pretty common that we're going to stick to, and that's Wednesday. After the 10-week course, I'm not. I can't guarantee we're going to have that hub active. That hub is for you guys in this course during that 10-week period. So that's why we're there. We'll we'll keep the hub live for all the classes coming up. But but um, but it's not a lifetime guarantee that uh, I'll be in that hub in that hangout for <laughs> every Wednesday for the rest of my life. Alrighty. So I'll come through, comment on these guys. You'll have seen your workshop navigation. So the module is in here. We will be making downloads available for all of module zero. So you should have that. 
uh, early next week, probably Wednesday or so, that we'll get that. Michael, we'll make sure your invite is, is reset, but really it's just a link. So I'll do one better than that, and we'll put a link to the Hangout up here in the description. Mad, ZBrush 5, God knows, those guys are crazy. Okay, so let's talk about everything that we want to get done today. Let me do some drawing. Give you guys a little bit of a sense of, of everything, and why don't we start my free mind program too. I was reading something pretty cool uh, last night that said that Leonardo da Vinci was the father of brainstorming. <laughs> it's kind of awesome. Okay. Wow. That's a lot of stuff to do today. Let me show you guys just how, how much trouble we're in. Now, uh, I know you guys probably want me to send you this, but I have to give you guys a caveat on in about what a class with me is like. I tend to do this at the last minute, not because I'm lazy, but it's because uh, it's something about the last minute where I get the energy, I get the momentum, and, um, and I'm able to kind of get everything synced together. So I do have plans for module three, four, and five, but these are subject to change, and by subject I mean they simply will change, because uh, I, I try to kind of keep it, uh, the energy really high, both in myself and with what I want you guys to be doing. So the first thing that we've got here is uh, the reference image system. Let's do that in red. I just want to give you guys a sense of how to use reference. It should be real quick, real simple. It's a pretty straightforward button, use see-through. Uh, and then we're going to jump into something a little bit more complex. And then I'm going to show you guys kind of one of the projects that's in there already. Scott Spencer, the noted author and awesome ZBrusher, uh, has a project in, uh, in ZBrush that really shows you how you kind of set things up and he does it with a skull. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is get in and start talking about this polygon, the, the new sculpting medium that you're in. And it is a sculpting medium. It's like Chivant or it's like, you know, Roma. When I use clay, I use Roma clay or earth clay. They have very specific properties and you have to know those properties in order to get the most out of it, right? Like if you've ever used monster clay, monster clay has a very specific way that it works. Chavant, you basically, you know, the harder Chavant, you got to have a hair dryer right next to you just to keep things warm and workable. So I'm going to show you and really focus on preparing you uh, to really make the most out of your sculpting system. This uh, out of polygons inside of ZBrush. So we're going to take a look at kit bashing. Kit bashing is going to lead us into mesh organization. You can see I have my little leader, my taglines, of how I'm going to segue. <laughs> we have uh, subtools, but we're going to look at subtools real basic. Then we're going to really define and talk about why subtools are important. Now they exist for one reason and one reason only. So I'm going to make sure you know what that reason is. And then we're going to get a little more complex. We're going to talk about subtools and extraction. Uh, and I'm talking about these in a very specific order. Notice, if for those of you who know ZBrush, I haven't talked about DynaMesh. And it's because it's important that you understand the system in ZBrush. Not just the latest features, but the system. And that's what I'm going to be presenting to you. Subtools is part of a system, and extraction is underneath that. It's part of a, a mesh generation system. Shadow box, we'll get in and talk about. We're going to talk about DynaMesh. That's after we've talked about all this stuff. But we want to talk about DynaMesh in terms of what is it, not just, hey, it's cool. What is it? And I'll give you a little teaser. You may not know this, 
But DynaMesh has actually been inside of ZBrush since before ZBrush 2. It's been inside of ZBrush since before ZBrush 2. It just took a little tiny extra feature, a little tiny tweak to what was already there to turn it into this awesome thing that we call DynaMesh now. And it's really cool for me because I remember when I was on the dev team, I remember uh, Pixelator coming up to me and telling me this idea and I was like, why would anybody want to do that? <laughs> so when we get there, I'll give you that little story because obviously I was wrong. All right, now if we get time, we're going to take a look at other ways of working with your mesh. So I want to make sure you know reconstruct subdiv levels, a cool trick that I use frequently, which is to turn the subdivision smooth off. And then we'll take a look at clay polish, which is kind of neat, and morph targets and layers. I don't use layers a lot. Some people do use layers. Um, but layers tend to add a lot of uh, a lot of file. They basically double the file size of your model. Morph targets double the file size. Uh, so I tend not to use them. I tend to use iterations. Uh, but some people do, and they get some great results. If we've got time, we're going to jump into the topology system primer. I'm going to show talk to you guys about the types of topology. Okay, sculpting topology, animation topology and then what I call uh, optimization topology. Okay, these all have very distinct purposes and this is my own brand of, of it. It's the brand I used when we were working on, um, on topology tools, subtools, mesh extraction, all that stuff at PixLogic and I think you'll like the explanation of it. Hopefully it'll make things simple. Uh, I'll introduce you to edge loops and some simple old school ways of doing uh, modifying your topology inside of ZBrush and uh, and then hopefully kind of prep you for when we start talking about hard surfaces in week four. That's when we get into panel loops, uh, groups loops and all of that. But panel loops is again part of a system and that system is built on the edge loop sub palette which has been in ZBrush since ZBrush 2. Okay, And then some other things. I'm not confident we're going to get all of that done, but let's see uh, what we can do. So now since the first thing you did was sculpt a face, we should probably get in and start looking at how to use reference.